Hi, I'm Jacob Thorpe, and I'm here with TV specialist and Holly Tuckett from Flying Hat Productions. How you doing, Holly? Doing great, Jake. Doing great. Awesome. Okay. And uh, today we're going to be taking the C300 from Canon's cinema line of cameras out on the road and giving it a test drive. And uh, excited? Very. Very this excited. is actually one of the cameras that I've been pining for, so to be able to work with you guys and have a chance to actually test drive it, uh -huh. it's kind of exciting for me. Cool, cool. Um, there are four cameras in the Canon Cinema line right now. There's the C100, the C300, the C500, and then the 1DC, which traditionally the 1D, the 1D was a DSLR, and it is still a DSLR, but it's been optimized for video, and now it's falling into the cinema line of cameras. But today we'll be on the C300. This is kind of the middle of the road for those cameras, and um, yeah, let's uh, get out there and see what it looks like. Take it for a drive. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, Holly, we're back. What did you think of the camera? Well, let me just get out my credit card right now. That good, huh? <laughs> I kind of liked it. You liked it. Okay, I so did. what did you like about this camera? Um, I think for me what I liked was the small footprint mm -hmm. that it's in. Um, it very much, I shoot with 5D. I have a, a Sony e, uh, EX3. It's kind of in the middle, but more towards the 5D mm -hmm. as far as, you know, the weight size. of it and size. Um, so that's that's really awesome. Um, the the functionality, like the the menu buttons and things, were very similar to um, how the five D functions. But yet, a lot of the menus within the menu mm -hmm. um, are very similar to the EX three. So, mm -hmm. you know, it for me, it's it's really familiar camera, even though I've never touched it until today. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like we were basically ready to shoot within about five minutes of getting to the to the set and mm. and basically able to like dial in the ISO dial in mm. all the ND filters and everything within about five minutes we were shooting. Do you like having ND filters on the camera? Yeah my only concern uh -huh. is is I know that they're kind of an internal thing mm -hmm. and um, you know I'm just you know over time how are those going to rotate is there going to be any issues mm -hmm with that kind of thing is just something that went, went through my mind as I was yeah. seeing how they, how they work mm -hmm. while I was swap, swapping them out. Um, and, they, and the only thing that we really had a lot of difficulty with really was uh, adjusting the Kelvin temperature. Kelvin white balance. The Kelvin mean, white balance, exactly. It's pretty so. easy to navigate to everything, but when we got to the Kelvin white balance, we couldn't figure out how to adjust over so we could Send it up or down Send it up or from down. 32 mm -hmm. to 56. What it ended up being was the uh, white balance button. So we hit function, scrolled, scrolled over to over. the Kelvin white balance, or the white using balance, uh -huh. using that. And then once we were there, you hit the white balance button, and it shifted us over to Over to it, so yeah. you could actually change the numbers and use the number setting rather than um, doing a custom white balance you know, with a white card. Which or you going know, to the preset tungsten yeah, or, or daylight. Yeah, yep. and, and the other thing of it is, is like it doesn't have... Um, as many presets as my Canon 5D does. Presets for? Presets for uh, temperature, you know, because I have um, cloudy day, shade, yeah, yeah. you know, so you can, you, if you're in a jam and you're in a hurry, you uh -huh. can kind of fudge mm -hmm. and use some of those those <laughs> presets for white balance. Which we don't do. We always do we, things yeah. professionally. Yeah, so. do, don't, you know. We don't fudge know. things. I, I, but I do think, you know, this is definitely made for a professional. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's, that's kind of the difference between shooting on a DSLR versus shooting with this camera mm -hmm. is you, you're going to lose some of those um, user-friendly functions, um, but, but rightfully so, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Um, we should be losing some of those functions because when you get to use a camera that has, you know, a time code hookup and an HDSCI and mm -hmm. all those things, you really you should you, know what you're you doing. should know what you're doing. Yeah. So I mean, you know, as as easy as I'm saying this camera was, I would say five years ago, mm -hmm. I would have struggled to figure out how to make mm -hmm. things look right. Um, you know understanding my ISO now better, what my white balance needs to be in certain situations, definitely lends to a better picture mm -hmm. out yep. of the camera. Yep. Absolutely. So, 
So, cool. Well, um, yeah, I mean, it, for me, the camera feels very much like a DSLR. And, you know, uh, it was interesting when the DSLRs first, DSLR cameras first came out, I was kind of on the opposite side of the fence for most people because I had a 7D, I, we picked up a 7D, we had the EX1. EX1 was just getting a lot more work, so I wasn't shooting with the 7D as much, but I, I have to confess the, the ergonom ergonomics of it as far as just grabbing it and you have your, you had your iris right there and you had mm -hmm. your, your shutter speed all on one hand was really nice. But um, there's kind of, it's kind of a give and take. It just depends on what you're doing. I, right. I've heard from you now and I've heard from another shooter that uh, one of the things you like about the DSLRs and smaller cameras like this is the fact that you can disappear. You're like a fly on the wall. Okay, so we've talked about form factor and several things having to do with ergonomics with the camera. Um, picture quality. Um, I've seen a lot of imagery working with TV specialists. I know that this, there, there's a lot of technical things that make this a superior image to any DSLR out there. What were your feelings on it? I mean, I'm looking at just a really, I, mean, I haven't had a chance to look at the footage yet on, on my own monitors, mm -hmm. but which I will, mm -hmm. and I definitely would love to give you some feedback yeah. after the fact that mm -hmm. maybe you can put in the blog section. Yeah. Um, but what I was seeing in the, the cup and, and here, I mean, it blows away my 5D, mm -hmm. definitely. And um, definitely rivals, if not a little bit better, um, especially in the low light tests that we did. Oh, yeah. um, there's no way that we could have shot what we shot in the low light with my with my Sony at EX3. There's mm -hmm. just no way. I would and it, and it wouldn't look the same because we would have to bring in so much more light. Mm -hmm. And you know, we basically we did all this like no no lighting equipment. We had basically two two little LED two little LED on LED camera lights on that camera we just kind of threw that we kinda, held and moved around and then the the, the screen basically mm -hmm. and then the outdoor um, stuff was all and the outdoor stuff was all natural we didn't need a bounce light we didn't you know mm -hmm. we didn't uh, you know it was all just what we had um, as a documentary filmmaker mm -hmm. this camera makes a ton of sense for me mm -hmm. um, you know I'm gonna get really high quality images fast yeah. I, you know I don't have to I don't have to have a whole gaffing crew to, to get what I need, mm -hmm. I feel like, with this camera. So I think, you know, as a documentary filmmaker, it definitely, it definitely appeals. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then, you know, using it in, in, you know, feature narratives and, you know, all that good stuff, I think it, it's, a, it's a logical choice for an independent filmmaker. Cool. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad you came out. Me too. We'll have you out again, I'm sure, someday for another yeah, camera. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm interested to <laughs> compare, contrast and compare Absolutely. cameras. So. so the next time, I'd love to tag along. <laughs> Great. Great. That's okay. All this is worth it. Before we wrap up, tell me about Flying Hat Productions. Who? What do you guys do? What do we do? Mm -hmm. um, we right now are in a process of kind of like rebranding, but um, we've done a lot of like commercial, industrial, um, production mm -hmm. but we also do a lot of post-production for mm -hmm. people um, you know we we cut on both Adobe Premiere and Final Cut 7 we're kind of switching out those can we we've kind of less and less have been has been cutting on Final Cut 7 mm -hmm. so we kind of call ourselves an Adobe house now as far as post goes and we also are working on things like shorts and features um, in the in all aspects, either behind the camera or, or you know during post. All right. Well, thank you for joining me on this little adventure with the C three hundred. It was and, a great adventure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was lots and of we'll fun. We'll catch all of you next time.